like perfect. Hello folks, welcome back. Sorry this video is a little bit late for I'm the one, the only, I am Hobo Tom. Let's talk about a so-so fighter fest. Um, the only reason why I say it's a so-so fighter fest, oh wait a second, I have a thank you to give out. Let's see here, so I can get this name right. Let's see here, Mr. or I'll say Adar Lohenheim. Thank you very much for your comment. Um, yeah, he said this is that's true, mainly because this is Florida. Um, teachers, for some reason, sleep with our students all the time, which is weird. For that, sir, you have earned the six count. Now, with that being said, let's talk about some AEW. In this video is um, late. Um, I'm getting a little gun shy about doing live stream. A couple times already, I've gotten copyright shame shames, uh, mainly for audio content. I did one for Impact, and whoa, they just blocked my whole video. I'm surprised I didn't get a zonk because I didn't use straight up information uh wwe got got me zonked again for audio use i'll tell you what these pro wrestling companies they're making it they're making it hard for the common wrestling fan to have fun and potentially make some money and to get a date but that's a whole other issue though so yeah but let's talk about fighter fest um the only reason I kind of look at it very questioningly, mainly because I was at Fighter Fest when it came here to Daytona Beach. And that was, yeah, it was Fighter Fest. It was a pay per view they had here in Daytona Beach. And it had a certain vibe to it. I understand that AEW is getting back there, and I had this discussion with Fife Dog if 
AEW is going to keep on having these named TV shows, I think it's going to take away from the pay-per-view because the pay-per-view is something special. I mean, if you think about WWE, Money in the Bank. Oh, you know exactly what that is. SummerSlam, you know exactly what that is. Um, Fighter Fest, you can't even know what it was, and now it's like a TV show. They have the Road Rager. Sounds special. Not really, though. So it's a weird in be that's a weird in between area. So if they keep on going to different states and just naming their TV shows, it's like the AEW Dynamite Fighter Fest. It loses a little bit of that specialness it had. Again, I have my machine gunner shirt on, Carl Anderson. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment section about naming your TV shows. NXT's done it. And I'm not real. The thing is, at least I'm honest. I don't like it when NXT just had um, Clash of Champions or they had um, the Beach thing. They had Halloween Havoc. Wasn't really on Halloween. It was just kind of like throwing in like October and it was a Tuesday. It was weird. Again, I'm, I'm not really a fan of that. If you're going to have the, the NXT Clash of Champions, that, sh that should be like an NXT TakeOver is what it should be. Um, you're going to have Halloween Havoc. You don't have to call it a TakeOver. Just call it Halloween Havoc as a special pay-per-view. I want to know what you, my YouTube audience, thinks so. though. Or if I'm just being old, old Tom. Sounds terrible. But I'm getting old though. Um, I know in a previous video, Paul Orndorff passed away, so I made that kind of tribute for him. All the good guys are leaving us quickly. So let's get to Fighter Fest. Um, it was John, the first match: John Moxley versus Carl. Anderson, the machine gunner, the bullet club fame. Um, starts off, Eddie Kingston jumps Luke Gallows, John Moxley jump, jumps Carl Anderson. They trade forearms forever. Um, a mox with a headlock. Very, very strike heavy match. Uh, it's it's one thing if that's a fighter's style. It's one thing if. You know, the wrestlers are changing their style to this. Again, Carl Anderson coming from that New Japan background. Kind of has it. John Moxley is that WWE wrestler. Obviously, he wasn't fun with a, a fond of the WWE style. Uh, Carl Anderson hit like a stun gun on the top rope. And was, when I saw that, I'm like, over. But then I looked at the clock, I'm like, too soon. And again, this is one of... My pet peeves is that certain wrestlers do their finisher and it doesn't have that effect that it should. And I'm like, you're just killing the gun stun, you're killing off Carl Anderson. The gun stun from the top rope should like make people go bonkers. They go to the outside Mox, um, sorry to bite and hit the superplex. Kind of traditional with what Moxie does. Uh, they both close on each other. And then there were gun stun after gun stun. And it, it's like, why bother? It's just another wrestling move. One paradigm shift, and it's a pretty weak looking paradigm shift, and that's it. Uh, John Moxley wins. Uh, overall, it wasn't. I am going to downgrade this. Now that I think about it, this was really just a ham sandwich of a match. Then uh, John Archer was upset about... Uh, Archer was... Uh, yeah. Lance Archer. Why am I thinking of John Archer? Uh, was upset about something. Jake the Snake. I don't know. That's Was upset about the wall. Who knows? He wants to, cha he wants to challenge John Moxley in a Texas death match in Texas. Again, if they keep on doing... Having these named 
TV shows and these gimmick matches all the time on TV. I know it's special. I know it's special because now they have the live audience. But if they're going to keep this up, though, now I'm thinking, well, what's going to be next week? What's going to be the gimmick next week? What's going to be the gimmick the following week? When, and it's kind of going down the way ECW went to some degree, where they, ECW started off, when you saw Rob Van Dam wrestle, freaking amazing. You didn't know you could do that. You saw New Jack, like the first time, have his bloody mashes bring in the trash can full of garbage. Amazing the first time. Second time, you're like, oh my goodness, he did this again? And then, by the fourth or fifth time, you're like, oh, it's, it's a typical New Jack match. Music's going to play throughout the entire match. And, yeah, that's kind of going to be it. So, there we go, kind of rearrange stuff a little bit. But, yeah, so, there is going to be a point... Where thing where, and it might just be myself and my generation, but where eventually they're going to get tired of all the gimmicks. Where's a good old fashioned wrestling match? I mean, if you're gonna have a Texas Death Match, what's gonna be next? And will you will it be that much of a letdown from seeing a test a Texas Death Match? That would be a great pay per view match. On TV? I mean, think about the um, Dustin Rhodes versus Nick Camacho. Strat match, you're like, huh? Remember that strat match? Two guys, or one guy likes to run away a lot. Said, And the face is like, I'm done. I'm sick of you running away. Beating me up. I have you by the strap. This is just like, a mash. It's, I don't know, weird. You have Andrade El Idolo. Um, again, doing great as Andrade normally does. You can't really fault him as that much. And then we had Ricky Starks versus Brian Cage for the FTW Championship. This match was not good. Oh, <coughs> not COVID. But, um, <laughs> that's still funny sounding. This was not a good match. There was a terrible start. There were botches all over the place. Uh, the kicking on the ropes, I saw that. Starks. He tried. And I thought Brian Cage was so much better in Lucha Underground. I don't know if he's literally trying to get all his stuff in. But... It's not as generic feeling as it did in Lucha Underground. It sounds terrible, but maybe he thinks he's a bigger star than he actually is. I mean, he's jacked. He has the look of a pro wrestler, the look of a guy that could rip your arms off and beat you with your own arms. Oh, that's my cat in the litter box. But he has that look. But yet it's... Very formulaic. And when something doesn't go right, they just literally retry it again. You know what? The ropes suck. Here in Daytona Beach, the ropes are probably the biggest hindrance to a good wrestling match ever. Uh, sweat builds up on them. They become slick. People slip all the time. The good wrestlers just kind of bounce back. And you might see them try the spot later on or just say, Pfft, we're not doing that. That's not that's not working. But he, parts of this match felt forced. Um, Starks again. He's he's actually pretty good. Uh, the sit out power bomb on onto Brian Cage was great. Cage I uh, got nailed by the belt, and then um, Starks came in with a spear, and it, it was just. It just felt that the timing was off. It was a can of soup.
And then we get into the promo, what I term as the promo part of the show, the filler. Uh, Cody Rhodes calls out um, Malachi Black, Tommy Enns, Alistair Black, Malachi Black, I guess I'll call him. That's a pretty close name to what he had, at least. It makes sense, Malachi. Sounds kind of sinister, so I'll give him that. Uh, Braun Sues, um, Tully Blanchard gets jumped backstage. Uh, Tony tried, uh, does an interview with Hangman Adam Page, the Young Bucks. Come out. I don't know. They just had some ugly outfits on. Uh, Chris Jericho does an interview. He gets jumped by Sean Spears. Again, it just felt like a, a lot of filler for the show. And that's not necessarily good considering what WWE does. Where they have... Only a few matches and a lot of filler on the show. Not necessarily the people you want to copy. I'll tell you what. Every week, the weekly TV show on Impact is really hit or miss, but you know you're getting at least five to six matches. Over two hours is really good. And Lucha Underground, they used to have one hour and have at least three matches. You know, you're getting a, a five-minute intro, something in between, and a five minute outro and so with that so that's 50 minutes you have like three solid 15 minute matches that makes sense with the ring introductions and all the other stuff that was a really good formula a lot of wrestling again you have your introduction your body and then your conclusion and it's all kind of proportioned off Pretty right. right. AEW used, used to be that. Not so much now, though. So we had our Matt Hardy versus Christian Cage match, and this was actually pretty good. Um, it was a t- classic tie-up. They want to see who can out-muscle the other. Uh, they do it out of the ring. That's great that they trade blows um, for the 10 count. Christian Cage got on. Ah, oh, 10. I wanted to see the delete. Delete, delete, delete. That would have been better. Uh, Matt, again, has a great neck breaker. That slingshot he does. Matt Hardy, still, you still got it. Uh, Christian Cage, he is flying. He, he, he's he's, he's going to fight a little bit. He has to be careful, though. Uh, let's see, what else do you do? That frog splash was good. Um, something else, because I wrote down and very ineligibly. And then you hit the kill. Christian eventually hit the kill switch on Matt Hardy. Christian Cage won. This could have been a pay per view match. They, sh- they should have built it up more. It was a cheeseburger match. But what they need to do, though, AEW seems like they're rushing things. They're trying to go from point A like to point B in like the span. Like they're only going from point A to point B really in a month. Old school WWE, and I'll bring up this example, uh, the Hogan Macho Man feud lasted a year and a half. And you really, and it kept on building it. It kept on escalating. So it just wasn't point A to, to point B quickly. It was okay. So, so there was this. Then there was this. There was there was A. There was B. There was C. There was D. There was E. There was F. And then all of a sudden it's this E. Probably H and I. But it kept on building. You're like, oh, I can't wait to see this culminate at one of their big shows. And then AEW is like, eh, I'll just wait a week. And they'll have the big match anyway for free. Impact does a good, even though it's goofy, Impact does a good job of drawing out stories. Russell House was hilarious. That went for like three months. And every time it's like, I want to see this. I want to see the big conclusion of this. And then it led from Russell House to who shot Johnny Bravo, which is absolutely ridiculous. And then they stretched that out. 
So, but again, so you have Russell House, point A. Who shot Johnny Bravo, point B. And now, now you're like, okay, we have point C. But it's over a longer period of time, and it keeps you vested into the program. Eight times not doing that. I'm just like, yeah, whatever. I'll just check it out next week. Yeah, I, I know it's going to happen already. They're going to have a big match, bluff match. Eh, a month from now. Why should I bother with the pay per views? I'll just watch it on. I'll just watch these matches on free TV, or on illegally streamed you on illegally streamed websites. Yeah, but I didn't tell the FBI about that. And by the way, WooTube's still down, which is making me sad. I'm missing all my other wrestling, which is not good. But yeah. So that's my thing. Like, they could have had this stretch out for a while still. So. Uh, Tony was there interviewing Britt Baker. I, Britt, I, I, I can't get behind Britt Baker. Uh, was Sammy Guevara then? Versus some jobber. I didn't even get his name. Sammy just goes all Sammy. Jabber gets a little offense in, but you know this wasn't in doubt. Um, eventually, it was a good high. I'll tell you what. The good thing about Sammy Guevara's matches that are high intensity, this one lasted probably seven minutes at best, but it's go, 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 go. So that's good, though. Sammy Guevara has the intensity to keep that up. So did the Jobber. It was good. It was, eh, it was a ham sandwich. Then we had Penelope Ford versus Yuki uh, Sakazawi, I think. Um, the arm throw by Yuki was pretty good. Um, uh, the hip attack, the hip drop. Ford uh, did some moves off the rope. I don't know. She hit like some weird like spinning suplex thing. <laughs> some spinning, yeah. Some spinning suplex. Uh, Ford has a new look. I put down that uh, face on my notes, as you can tell, very clearly see by my scientific notation. Ford new look. So yeah. Um, I don't know. It was this is a can of soup match. Again, some of these matches just seem like such throwaway matches, but whatever. Um, again, probably the probably the best match, the most part of the evening was Darby Allen versus Ethan Page in the coffin match. <laughs> All the things they used, again using the tables. I do like the fact Ethan Page started to take the ring apart. If you ever really want to whack someone, you don't throw them head first into exposed turnbuckle. You want to take that turnbuckle hook and try to commit bloody murder. So, at least in this kind of style match, it made sense. He knocked the turnbuckle hook off, off the little circle thing. And he was just, he was going to commit bloody murder on Darby Allen. That made sense. Again, but why are you giving away your coffin match where you really have only had like one sit down interview? They've had a, a, like two or three matches. Again, draw it out. Try to get me, my cat chasing stuff. Probably, uh, who knows what it is now. But uh, draw it out. Get me vested into it so I can watch it and then say, yeah, yeah, I can't wait. Oh, he's, oh, he did that this week. Uh, what's what's going what's gonna to happen next week? Because, you know, after the interview, you're like, they're going to have a match. All right. We'll be in a coffin. Yeah, I've seen coffin matches before. Yeah, it's called Buried Alive. It's a coffin match between The Undertaker and Yokozuna for a big pay-per-view. It wasn't on TV. 
they might have like they might tease a coffin match on TV Undertaker might come down Stone Cold Steve Austin you will rent Stone Cold Steve Austin I have this special 316 coffin for you for you shall rest in peace ah. but yeah so there was a build to it and it was because it was because Stone Cold had the belt the Undertaker jumped him for the belt the next week Stone Cold jumps Undertaker for the belt and then all of a sudden McMahon says there's a contract signing so Stone Cold busts up and Vince McMahon signs it in his blood signs the contract in Vince McMahon's blood then the Undertaker comes back busts open Steve Austin signs that signs his name in Steve Austin's blood and then there's the back and forth and like a month later you're like yeah yeah Arr, kill kill you're like you get all in a frothy humor about it not this match it's like yeah we're just having a coffin match we don't like each other we explained it you deal with it, audience. No, not good. And there was a great super power bomb onto the steps. That was actually pretty good. Paige gets stuck in the coffin. And that was, for the most part, it. Darby Allen did a coffin drop onto said coffin, which probably hurts, hurts him more than Paige. Solid match, I guess. Cheeseburger match. And that was AEW. AEW. Dynamite. Dynamite. Poof. Poof. Just like the way the ring went for once. Um, yeah, so I do apologize for this video being late. I'll try to be I'll try to be more timely next week. Maybe. If I'm lucky. Who knows? Um, I do have day off. The middle of the week. So that kind of let, 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 lets me get stuff squared off. And I can't do the two shows because I close. Well, I can't do the one show because I close at my real job. But yeah, so again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Thank you for dealing with me in my very splotchy ways. I have, again, please like, share, comment, subscribe. Oh, and in about two weeks, yeah, about two weeks, three weeks, look for this guy in Orlando. I'll give you a more notice then. Bye, folks.